Welcome to the GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Okay, thank you so much. If you're tuning into our GCP Mindset channel, if it's your first time, warm welcome to the channel. Every so often, we love to have longer videos on here, which include interviews with experts. So today we have two experts, actually three, um, co-founders of an SMO or site management organization in Brazil. Welcome to you three. So Priscilla, Renata, and Vinicius, maybe we can just start with some introductions from your end. Um, I'll just hand it over to you, Priscilla. Okay. First, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Priscilla. I'm a medical doctor and my concentration area is intensive care medicine. And I'm also a clinical research at Sanders. Welcome Priscilla and Renata. Thank you. My name is Renata Hem. I have 14 years of graduation in nursing. I'm master degree in, and I'm CEO Sanders. Welcome, nice to have you both. And Vinicius? Okay. Uh, hi, Carol. Many, many thanks for invitation to this interview. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and to your audience. And I'm going to tell you about myself. I'm from Brazil and I studied biology when, when, and when I finished my second postdoc, I moved to the Tor Spirit Sun to start a professor I'm in our university, Motivix, specifically in the medicine school, teaching about research uh, classes. And then I also started a manager of research center in two hospitals, it was five years ago. Finally, I left the hospital and nowadays I'm here in Sanders as a CRA and as a co-founder together, Renata and Priscilla. Okay. Well, it's lovely to have all three of you today on the GCP Mindset channel. I'm pretty sure everyone's really excited to find out more about SMOs. So you co-founded or you started an SMO. So what exactly is an SMO and why are they useful in clinical trials? And you. May as you want to I? Go for it. Yeah, uh, let's go. Uh, so. SMO, as you said, is a uh, means site management organization. It's kind of an organization uh, responsible to perform uh, some important research uh, protocol process as needed by sponsor and under supervision of the coordinating center. In this role, we study the research protocol, evaluate the execution steps, and organize the entire process so that the study takes place accurately return the necessary information with quality and correct data. Okay, thank you. Would you like to add with Renata Vinicius? The management is not common here in, uh, in our siege. Uh, we are the first sites like this working here in our stage. Okay. And was it challenging starting an SMO? Um, like, did you guys face any challenges when you started it? Being an SMO in Brazil is challenging and at the same time, it makes us very excited. It is a challenge because we are in the context where the good professionals available in the marketing still do not have much experience in, in clinical studies and hospitals and clinics still do not understand the vision of collaboration in studies uh, that we offer in partnership. We really like challenges and uh, therefore we train good professionals and conquer the market to, to our dominance in clinical studies. With this, we haven't been the main recruiters in large clinical studies, and we are becoming progressively uh, knowing the region. That's lovely. 
um, yeah, we all love challenges. That's why we're in the field, right? Yes. And we never give up. <laughs> <laughs> the results, the, the results uh, overwhelm problems. So yeah. we will not give up. It's our mission now. This is great. This is great. And um, what, what therapeutic areas is your main focus? Uh, actually, Sanders, uh, we have participated in many studies focused on intens intensive care in COVID-19. And now we are close to starting studies in, in the area of tomology, cancer, and cardiology, and the others. Uh, in the region, we have a close relationship with the many leading physicians in different therapeutic areas, and we are already prepar prepared to work on studies such as bacin, infectious disease, pneumology, rheumatology, and among the others. Uh, but I think that the next two weeks, we will start the the ophthalmology and the next month or two months we will start the oncology study. And oncology is really challenging, isn't it? Yeah, this is the first time that we will uh, participate in, in this field and uh, will be a great uh, learning about this protocol and the issues and stuff like that. And, but we have very looking forward to start this because uh, we know that in oncology is a field with great results, a great impact in the population. And here in the in our state in Spirit Sato, we think that no much more studies in this field. And it's a, a great uh, appreciate to start this, this study here. Oncology, uh, uh, the process are very complex. You have more, uh, much more steps in that uh, inside the process than I study on oncology. Mm -hmm. But our team, uh, the oncologists, are very good. Uh, have uh, m uh, many knowledge about the, the, the specialty itself and it, and it's very very good for us so uh, despite it's more difficult we think it's uh, it will be easy because that the team we have so yeah. uh, we are very excited to start as Vinicius said and here uh, in Espirito Santo we we have centers that are uh, referenced in oncology so we have a pool of patients uh, so the, the chance of recruitment is too high for studies on oncology because there is no, no much, uh, there is no studies going on here. There is a few one going on. So we think the results here, uh, the expectation is high to, to get some good results here. In addition, uh... We know about the patient net of subject that can participate in this study. Uh, in a common uh, treatment, we know that in the hospital, the, the patients receive a treatment, but with some uh, concerns about the uh, dislocations. Uh, most of patients is the uh, cities far from here. And then the the drug that we use to treat this this cancer is specifically is a uh, breast cancer. And then with this study, we can opportunize it to these patients uh, dislocate dislocation with no costs. Uh, as access to to drugs, uh, the new drugs and drugs with more potential in, in treatment, and this is very uh, this is very very good for us. And 
we we see the the team of the hospital that that we have uh, that we have partnered and people there is very excited to start this is very very good That's wonderful. And it, would you say this is, I mean, we run a lot of studies on ophthalmology. I think this is like one of our main focus. Would you say this is um, ophthalmology from your experience? Because I know you just mentioned it. Would that be the same as well? What's your experience there with ophthalmology studies? No, in ophthalmology is the same. It's the first time that we, we will participate in this field. Mm -hmm. And we have exactly the same in the oncology. It will be a, a challenge for us. Uh, with our feelings is that uh, the challenge is more, will be, uh, will be more challenging participating in the ophthalmology, ophthalmology than oncology because the protocol of the ophthalmology have much, much more steps and in, in this, uh, this complex. You, you, and the terminology, the, the protocols is very new for us. Yeah. It's too complex as well, but, uh, again, uh, the, the partner, the, where we are going to work with uh, this, we are going to roll this study is, uh, is too well uh, uh, well uh, equipment uh, there uh, the, uh, the last generation it's very good equipped equip, uh, the team is very good uh, so uh, we are very confident to to roll the study there yeah yeah that's that's really good and um so we've talked about challenges. Um, what would you say somebody considering studying an SMO would need to consider? What kind of points do they need to take into consideration based on the challenges that you, you face studying up? Well, uh, if someone intends to open a company like ours, uh, it's important to know that it takes a lot of dedication, responsibility, and resilience. You have to have mo much more resilience. Uh, having experience in clinical study is uh, essential too. But the key point that we can cite is as the most important is having determination to work with challenge and always thinking about innovation and originality. It's important to keep in mind that cl uh, clinical research is collaboration. It's, it's very important to keep in mind. And more well-developed uh, Brazilian centers, better the studies developed uh, in our country will be. Então, at the end, so, então, no, so at the end, uh, everybody wins. That's it. That's that's why Vinicius said it's, it's more about collaboration and it's not a competition. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I still love that quote. We are all in this together in the end, and we are all striving for the same, you know? Yes. Better treatments for the patients. Yes. Yeah. We are all we are all running uh, after the same objective at the end. I appreciate that you mentioned that, Priscilla. Thank you. And um, so let's move back. So SMOs, you said you work with CROs. I think you've told me before, and you work with different sponsors to create a hub where examinations are done, depending on the indication. So for instance, your SMO takes part, particularly in specific studies, right? Sorry, I didn't get. Okay, I'll rephrase it. So you work typically with CROs and sponsors, right? Yes. Yeah. And do you pick and choose different indications like, um, like you said, ophthalmology, oncology, or are you usually willing to take on different types, you know, just to get more experience as well? 
is there like a main focus when it comes to therapeutic in indications that you focus on? If, if I get, I think that well, as we are a new same site of the, the studies, we are open to, to any field of the study. And uh, of course, in ophthalmology and oncology, we start the, the, the collaboration with the sponsors, then uh, uh, we have expectations that continuing with the others uh, is, uh, protocols. But if we appear sponsors with protocols in oncology or any field, we are ready to, to uh, perform these studies and specialize in ourselves in, in this field, new fields for us. Uh, I answer is consonant with you last. I don't know. I think Priscilla also wanted to add something. I, well, uh, uh, and the, the first, uh, uh, the initial moments, we focused in intensive care medicine because uh, it was my concentration area. So we worked with uh, studies on uh, mechanical ventilation, uh, inflammatory disease, sepsis, uh, and we go on uh, working on COVID. And after this, we are we are uh, focus. We have focus on ophthalmology now, oncology, and cardiology. Yeah, it becomes for us. Uh, we have invitations. Uh, uh, after uh, our uh, work with this study. So uh, now CROs knows our work, knows we work well, we can give we, uh, back uh, data uh, with quality, with high quality, that is very good, it's very important, and we can, when we have a great, a high uh, number of recruitment, we have a, a very good commitment with it. After this, we have some invitations in cardiology, oncology, and ophthalmology. But now we are going to, we are prepared to move on with some, uh, with studies in other areas. Yeah? So uh, we don't have enough focus, a, a specific focus. We we are open, as Vinicius said, we are open to to receive invitations uh, of in every, in every specialty. We are, if some uh, study because, uh, comes to us and we see that we are not, we are not ready, we are going to run after to, to get ready to roll that study. That's what we have in mind. Yeah. So uh, I think is that you, you want to know? Uh -huh. Yeah, no, that's great. Like you added some other in indications there as well. So that's really good. And what is it like for patient recruitment? Like, how do you recruit the patients? Well, we all today, uh, w when they study is in inpatient, uh, it's easier because we can be, we can go after, see who fill the criteria. So it's easier. And now we are, we are uh, uh, working with outpatient studies. Uh, in this case, we work with social medias, so uh, the patient co uh, could see at our um, social medias uh, what studies are open, mm -hmm. and if he feels criteria to to get in that study. Uh, in other way, he just can see us in social medias or look at uh, uh, look for us at the site at our site and fill uh, some forms put there some data and as soon as we have a study that he feel uh, the criteria, the inclu inclusion criteria, we are going to be in touch with him. So it's uh, it's different when I study in, with inpatient or, or it's, it's a study with outpatient. Yeah. And do you have a pool of patients that usually you would contact for you know, studies when you know that they meet the criteria or 
do you mainly focus on new recruitment each time? We have, you can say, let's talk, sorry, sorry, you need to go on. Talk then in new recruitment, we have, we have no uh, database yeah. uh, because we, we're a new site, but uh, most part of our patients uh, is uh, coming from uh, a network that Priscilla has with your other uh, other doctors and the many hospitals that uh, Priscilla has contact. Priscilla uh, has another business that uh, she puts doctors in uh, to work in the hospitals. Then the most hospitals here from uh, Victoria. Uh, we have contact because of this this network of the doctors in the hospitals. We, we can reach the the patient and the possible subjects in, to different studies. Wonderful. And how do you maintain, for example, patient retention so that the patients that you recruited do not drop out of the study? Uh, how we can? Keep the patients engaged in the, in the clinical studies. Uh, this is a, a, this is a, a, a some problematic is the, uh, the most studies that we actually all the studies that we participated in, uh, we had to, uh, a big part of patients that uh, give up the, the study. Okay. All of them uh, con continue to, to end of the study. But uh, the, the, the patient, the Brazilian patient, uh, has a problematic about the culture of the Brazilian people, about science. And uh, interesting that uh, yesterday and tonight I was uh, watching the live of my friend researching the USA, uh, saying that people there have some problematic here about the, the knowledge and culture in, in science. And, uh, people don't know details or uh, in, uh, have some understand about the research or clinical trials, and because of that, have some uh, reject. Uh, no, I uh, I don't know participate because I I don't know about that. But uh, this this scenario change when a doctor. Uh, talk with the patient, uh, explain about research, explain about the protocol, and then the the patient uh, open to your uh, uh, the mind about the research. But uh, actually, when we have a, a study uh, in the outside patient, uh, the outpatient, uh, it, the most of them. Uh, recruits the, the participating in the studies. In addition, uh, uh, in resume, I think uh, the, the the most important key to to keep the, the patient in the studies and not losing him uh, may be the communication, as Vinicius said. So when we we it's important to build. Uh, the trust between the teamwork of the study, the the ex the assistance team, the doctor that is in the peripheral peripheral way next to the patient, and with the patient, it, it's to yeah, so it's very important to build this trust, and the key is the communication. It's to be uh, clear with the information, uh, explain everything. Uh, the patient must to trust in what we are doing, and, and it's for real. It's uh, responsible. 
and when he, he gets when he see that he gets that it's easy to get to to get, uh, to keep the follow up we work it very hard in the follow up with this patient so uh, when the the patient goes uh, uh, that has the discharge from the hospital we keep the follow up we we keep uh, calling him knowing he's he is still well where where how he is at the time and he, if there is a complication uh, we give a orientation for him so uh, he he is not he is not alone yeah. he knows uh, he is not alone he will be uh, we will be with him at uh, up to the end of the study and sometimes after because we create a connection and he feels uh, uh, the trust and he, he feels uh, comfortable calling us. Uh, that's right, no, Renata. Yes, Renata. Yeah. He, he thinks he calls uh, anytime. Yeah. Uh, even after the study ends. So it's very important. Uh, if you don't create, if you don't build uh, uh, this connection with the patient, with the family, the, the patient's family, so uh, it's it's is, if there is a chance you lose this patient. So uh, if you build this very well, uh, it's great. Uh, it's a, a, the chance is to keep him for in this study up to the end, and maybe in another study, or you, he will uh, tell about this about this work with a friend with his family and other people will uh, will look for us it, it, it's it's important to to uh, cons uh, to build the, the, this concept with the community as well it, 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 they have to understand what is clinical research uh, why we do this yeah and the same uh, mission uh here in Brazil, many people do not have health insurance in independence of our social unifying health system. Therefore, the and in consolations, treatment, and exams available in clinical studies are attractive because they are out of reach even for patient, patients of uh, HMOs. In, in the same hand that Priscilla said, well, here in the Sanders, we are creating a, a movement with this uh, issue, the clinical trial, uh, in our social media, with uh, uh, material in the posts, explain about it, how, yeah. how is participating in the in that protocol, how benefits, uh, how, uh, uh, how in this process and stuff like that. In, in, in addition, we creating a, a post graduation uh, in the clinical trial to specialize people, and we we open uh, to visit here in, in our. And our center uh, students of the students uh, in the dif uh, different areas in the health uh, to sp spread the 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 issue and about clinical trials because people need uh, be informed. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought all these topics, especially with communication, relationship building, um, and just sharing that knowledge as well. It's really important that people know what what, what are they contributing to, right? Yeah. And I think for when once people know the impact that they can bring to the studies, then they're more likely to take part. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, and that takes me to the next question. Like, how is the participation rate in general? Are patients, are people in Brazil likely to take part in clinical trials? 
population, the patients do not have much knowledge in clinical research. Okay. Our work, our work has been to use simple language. You simplify it for them, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you give lectures or how, how, what, what else are you doing to the community that can help them understand the impact that they make um, when they take part? Absolutely. Uh, me and Priscilla, we are professor in a high school. And then because of this, we, we, all the time we, we are doing lectures to students to, to inform them, to, uh, to more information as possible we can uh, offer to the, to them, we, we do that. We are, we frequently, uh, produce, uh, informations about uh, clinical researching and we publish it in our social medias in our site, uh, as Vinicius said, we are receiving uh, groups of students from Miri, uh, Miri School. Uh, I don't know how you say there, but uh, uh, students from school and we try to explain what is it, what clinical research is. We show what we do, how we work, so uh, we think these people, will, these students will grow with a new concept and it will be easier to them to understand what is clinical research and to easier to, to think that uh, participate is good. Yeah. And it, we are, so we are working the future. <laughs> we are trying to work with students uh, to get in profession when, when they became professional, uh, maybe a uh, professional uh, in this area too. So we are trying to work in, uh, including this, trying to, yeah. to show that is a, a, a area, professional area that, uh, it must have more professional, more specialized people. Uh, that's why we're thinking about, uh, post-graduation too. So we are trying to work people we have to have people and uh, getting the information uh, trying to 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 take the information to everyone so it it's it will be it will be easy to have more volunteers we have to have volunteers uh, so uh, to get that people want to understand what is clinical research that's the hard work now help you're doing great. I appreciate what you're doing. Like, I think the community will appreciate it as well. Like you said, generations to come, they can already keep that in mind. Yeah. And like, I mean, knowledge shared, you cannot take that away from anybody. So no, it's great work, what you're doing. So keep that up, keep that up. Thank you. And um, so let's talk about the SMO landscape. So what happens in the SMO? Like what happens in at your center, at your site? How well? Just to understand it a bit more better. I'm sorry. Uh, you're asking about our process here? No, just the the... Do you do procedures? Do you, like, once you recruit the patient, they come in? Is there anything that happens there? Just to, we will have to edit this question probably. And <laughs> we are a, a site, an independent site. Uh... Okay, let me reword the question. So what's the difference between an SMO and a site? Like, is there something different that happens at your site um than you know just any other center like any other hospital or something the difference here to the, the other centers may I, may i answer this yes go ahead so so uh yes there's a difference carol uh 
our perception is that we have uh, less bureaucracy, so our process uh, goes faster. Uh, when we talk about uh, evaluation, contract evaluation, uh, we see that in sites, uh, in these sites uh, at hospitals, uh, this process uh, takes uh, too much time. Uh, and when we build our center, we saw that we can uh, take off some bureaucracy and we can get it faster. It's very good for the sponsor because he, he, uh, he wants hurry in this process. So we have less bureaucracy. We have more flexibility uh, on hiring people. So some studies uh, requires more people because needs more uh, to roll the study in, in a faster way. And we have uh, more flexibility on hiring people and get this team growing uh, faster as we have to, to, to do. So it's good uh, as well. And uh, being a SMO, we see uh, the, the, the proximity with the team, the, with the assistant team is more and the chance of recruitment is higher. So we can get a higher uh, number of recruitment because of this, this proximity with the assistance team. Uh, I th we think this is the advantage uh, of being an SMO. Uh, uh, basically, I think it's, the, it's it. I don't know if Vinicius wants to add some. We are an SMO very focused uh, on results that the security and security of research patients. So our work takes place with investment in people and uh, in history, we never necessary. When we have a study that demands more people working, we invest because the quality of information is an expectation of our sponsory customers coordinate society in and is a premise uh, of our company. Lovely. No, that's really, really good. Um, and um, what size of studies do you provide um, patients for? Like uh, the bigger studies or smaller? Like, do you have an idea that we can work with? We worked with already with bigger studies, uh, most central, uh, most centric studies. Yeah. Uh, so we can roll both smaller ones and bigger ones. Well, the biggers are more excited. I think. Yeah. It's a it's a competitive to to get more patients. We see uh, among the centers. So. Uh, there is more uh, uh, excitement. Yeah. And we are ready for both. So like phase three as well, you've taken part in. Uh, we did part, yes. Third. Yeah. So has your SMO ever taken part in an audit? And how was it? Uh, no, we don't have been audited yet. Uh, we just have been monitored by the teams uh, of the coordinating centers. Mm -hmm. They they become, uh, they see the process, uh, they uh, actually, they they do some audit, the, the viewing all the process and making sure it was uh, made in a correctly way. And it's good. Uh, we always learn when it, uh, when it happens. So it's good for us. It's a chance to, to think better to do better uh, some process so it's an important way to to get better all the process uh, rolling in a protocol uh, in a research protocol and so uh, it's very good for us yeah great and um, okay I thought Vinicius wanted to add something sorry no no Okay. What is the Okay. What is the arena of clinical trials in Brazil like? 
Is it different where you are because of the location? Is it the same all over Brazil? Could you maybe just talk about the clinical trials, um, the whole entire spectrum in Brazil? What is it like? For those who've never had sight from uh, let me let me start. Uh, well, uh, uh, here in Brazil, we we see some uh, uh, concentration of the clinical studies in some regions. Uh, São Paulo is too strong, Rio de Janeiro, uh, but uh, we we see that. It's important to, to to extend clinical study for other regions. Here in Espírito Santo, uh, we are new. There is another uh, SMO, uh, but uh, we are very in the initial phase, uh, and there is a, 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 a great opportunity to to conduct to conduct this study here. Because of it, because you don't you don't have a, a, a study and, uh, making trouble with an order. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say concurrent, Con uh, yeah. conflict. Yeah, you don't have studies conflicting here in Spirit Sound because they are uh, still in a small number. So uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, the pharmacy industry to to look for us and see that here it's a great opportunity. Different from Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo has so many, the studies are concentrated there. So uh, a chance uh, the, uh, about conflicting studies is, a, is high. Uh, so the chance of recruitment is minimal. They are uh, that the reason they are looking for another SMOs is that so uh, we are having invitations from coordinating coordinating centers from São Paulo because of that. So uh, it's a great opportunity to run studies here because of it. Yeah. Uh, e, e lá, deixa um, here in Brazil. Every time we hear that Brazil uh, needs to improve with more structure, with new sites, with new SMOs and centers of the clinical trials. But to the other hand, I, I, I take some information before to start here that I, 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 uh, I, I'd like to share with you. Yeah. Brazil population. 200 million people, Brazil is too big. Uh, our region that is so fast, here in our region, we have 8 to 9 million people. 8 to 9 million people is this, our region is the same, uh, have the same population in the German. In German, we have 8 to 3 million people. This is uh, all our region. And the Espírito Santo here, our state, has 4 million people. And I mean that Brazil is too big. And our our area in the station is too big too. And for example, the the size of the, the surface, no, the size of the surface is three times bigger than the area of the German. And then because of this uh, size very huge here in, in Brazil, I, I don't know how the sponsors can uh, evaluate our scenario because uh, in, in you, uh, I'm not, uh, one point we have a uh, less number of the sites, but our area is very big, then dissolve this, like, uh, and then uh, when I, I see the number of the studies, 
Brazil is the country that has more number of studies in the world than uh, uh, the studies activated here. We have 100, no, no, 1,500 studies activated here in Brazil. And again, is the, the country that has more studies activated in the world. Then we have some, uh, Priscilla said this scenario, but I, I, uh, I think that we need to consider this information that I, 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 I'm saying here, because we have very positive points to explore in the clinical trials, because, uh, uh, you know, the, in, in the one side we have the culture problematic. In, in patients and professionals that uh, have less knowledge about this, but the other side we have a big country with a, a misogynic population that is very great to group to, com to compose a group in, in these clinical trials, but uh, we. Uh, we are not a reference country in the clinical trials. Then I will have to, I don't know, I, I'm doing here a brainstorm about this this point because we have these different stages of the points to discuss here because the the size of the country, culture, and misogynic population, uh, investment and uh, the, the, the pharmacy in, invested here in Brazil uh, three, uh, in three years ago uh, 72 million dollars in clinical trials then I think that pandemic situation and the COVID-19 COVID uh, bring to us a uh, start to 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 improve the scenario, and I think that the things is is improving. But uh, I think we have a, a long street to the long way to 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 go. But I, I think it is Brazil. I think it's a, a great a great. Is, location to to work clinical trial in Brazil we have uh, we have structure we have population we have expertise that's it no evidences but we don't have investment yes but mm -hmm. but uh, having exper expertise having structure and have population we have we are a great field we are a great field to do to roll the the, the clinical trials, uh, we must investment. Uh, we must have investment, but I think it's it's uh, it's necessary to uh, to distribute these clinical trials for all the regions in Brazil, and not concentrate this only in São Paulo, the big cities, on big in big cities. Decentralization <laughs> of this. These invitations of the yeah. trials because yeah. here, uh, but here in the Spirito Santo, uh, we we have some challenges because the hostels uh, are improving some structures. It's becoming uh, this activity, and then we we are helping the helping this, but. Uh, I have great expectations to the vaccine years. Uh, this person became a, a reference in, in clinical trials. This interjects some studies to here. And uh, the senders will be happy with this. <laughs> you work for this. Yeah. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Like, I'm glad you brought all these 
really important points. You know, with this structure, you have systems, you have expertise, you have the hospitals, you have the patients, and you just, yeah, you're in a different location, and therefore it's also good for the patients that they don't have to probably even travel all the way to San Paulo to run as many. They could also come somewhere closer to home, right? Yes, that's it. Yeah. How far are you from San Paulo? Uh, 500 kilometers, about one hour in flight. Okay. No, about two hours in flight and about 12 one hours and a half. <laughs> one hour and a half flight. Yes. Okay. Okay. I accept that. <laughs> By car is about 12 hours. Quite a distance. We start in best way. 12 hours. <laughs> Quite hours to Yeah, that's quite a distance for the patients to travel to. Yes. Yeah. No, it's really, it's really good that there's different locations. And like you said, you have different patient population. You have, um, like Vinicius says, I think your population is super high. Like just your area is nearly the population of Germany. Like just yeah. your area. That's yeah. impressive. And it's the same population of the German. Yeah. And the area here is three times bigger. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So that means even if people were to register at senders to take part in a study, that means they still have to travel quite a while, right? The patients. Sorry, because of like the diff the the huge area, the patients still need to travel quite a distance if they enroll in a in a trial. Sometimes yes, we sometimes we have some patients that need to to change or travel some hours to reach here. And is this discouraging for the patients? Kind of. Uh, one side uh, is too far, but the the quality of the attainment and the quality and the efficiency of treatments of the disease yeah. I think, encourage the patients because in the other side, if patients uh, choose treatment in the public hospital or in a public uh, institution and uh, maybe we spend more time in treatment in efficient treatment and and when we have the contact with the patient we we'll explain this to 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 them that to do on one side is too far but they will have a, a great uh, treatment and benefits to participate in the, the clinical trial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think um, you've given us quite a good insight about Brazil general, you know, like clinical research arena, patient population, um, why people should come to send us as, an, as their SMO. So I think um, we've covered quite a few good topics. Is there anything else you want to add that you think maybe we should highlight? Mm -hmm. Carol, we, we are uh, delighted with your invitation and interest in, in getting to know us better. We know that we still have great challenges ahead, but every day we have meet competition and professionals like you and have grown a lot with each new experience. Uh, we know we are on the right track and we are very excited about each new milestone and learning. I'm excited for you. Absolutely excited for you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from Priscilla or Vinicius? Oh, uh, I would like to thank you again. It's uh, it's wonderful for us 
uh, this opportunity of uh, other people uh, around Brazil uh, to know us, about us and knows that uh, you know that we are uh, here uh, prepared to get a studies of any area. So uh, it's very good uh, and thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to thank you too. And always is amazing uh, talking about uh, clinical trial, spread this movement in the population, explain some points uh, that some people have dubbed. And I hope in the next time you, we can work together <laughs> if you have some yeah. studies to share with us. And that's it. Have a nice day. And see you. It was it was my pleasure having all three of you on the call today on on our channel. Um, thank you so much for preparing so short notice as well. So it it was it was my pleasure talking to you guys. And for our viewers um, today, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, until next time, if you have any other topics, also let us know in the comments. And we'll put everything in the comments section, some links, um, some information as well about the SMO that we've been discussing with today. And of course, you know where to find us on all social media platforms. Uh, please share the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.